Oh, hey, I'm so glad you could make it to the lumber party. Hey there. So today is project day and we're going to be making a workbench. A simple workbench. How simple, you may ask? Well, we're going to make minimal cuts using hand tools. And we'll only use screws for joining. Before I show you the design, let's talk about why I designed it the way I did. First and foremost, the lack of tools. I don't have any tools to make quick cuts, cut boards to size, work with sheet materials, or even clamps to clamp glued lumber together. The second reason is simplicity. I want to make this table as quickly as possible because I need the table to build everything else that I want to. Okay, so let's talk design. So I went online and had a look at a couple of standard workbenches. I paced out their dimensions on the floor, but found them to be both too short and too narrow. At least we have an idea of the standard sizes now. Next, I had a look at what the standard sizes of lumber are in order to pick a logical size for my table. Using this info, I got three 1 by 10 inch boards that are 6 feet long. They will form the tabletop without needing to make any cuts. For the frame, I decided to get three 2 by 2s that are 6 feet long. This way, the only cuts that are necessary are to bring the shorter aprons to size. In practice, I was only able to get the 8 foot ones, so more cuts are necessary. The last piece of the so-called puzzle is the 2x3s that I'll be using to make the legs. These boards are 8 feet long, so I'll chop them in half to get a table that's roughly 4 feet high. A word of warning, I've already learned something very important during this project. That is, that board sizes quoted at the home improvement stores are quoted on nominal size. Their actual size differ from the nominal size. That is to say, that a 2x2 is actually 1.5 by 1.5 inches. That's pretty stupid. It is as bad as calling your girlfriend by another girl's name. When buying wood, be sure to inspect the boards yourself. Most of the wood I inspected had surface damage, cracks or were very very skew. If you're like me, we don't have the tools to deal with those types of problems yet. So be sure to inspect the boards on all sides. Also check whether it's straight. To check whether it's straight, put one edge of the floor, lift the other edge up to your eye, and you could easily see whether it's skew. This one is a bit skew, but it's one of the better ones that I could find. Okay, so let's get to building. First, we'll lay out the tabletop. Inspect the boards for damage. If you find damage, you can flip the boards over and move them around until you have the best edges facing up and out. When the layout is done, you can align the boards and mark them with a triangle. This way you can keep track of the boards and in which order they come, because the triangle will only line up in one way. We can now do the same for the legs and the frame, decide which pieces go where, measure them and mark them clearly. I marked all my pieces on the inner side and I used the most curved 2x2 two two for the short aprons. All the lumber will be joined using these 2 inch long screws. They have a washer head, a square drive and a self tapping tip that cuts into the wood to minimize pre-drilling. Now we can make our cuts. I'm going to use this bow saw. The teeth on the saw seem to be too coarse for this work. I might have to switch out my blade for the metal cutting blade. This isn't the best saw for the job, but it's what I have. Use what you have. If you don't own a saw, buy a saw that is meant for carpentry. These saws have finer teeth that reduce splintering and will give you a better finish. You can see the saw blade I used didn't give us a good finish and splintered out some of the wood. 
I'll try the metal blade next. Cutting with a hacksaw blade was a lot more work, but the finish is generally better, except for this splinter. To avoid splintering, we can put masking tape on both sides of the cut. In making a cut, I'm not making it on the marked line, but to the scrap side of the line. That way the final product is closer to the true desired length. The shorter aprons need to be 24 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. I'm going to divide this apron into three parts to mimic where the boards meet. So this first length is going to be 7 and 11 sixteenths. The same goes for the other side. The apron is marked. Now we're going to mark our screw holes. I'm going to insert the screws one inch from each edge or line and then insert a third screw in the middle to get an even spacing. After we've marked our screw holes, we can drill. Be sure to use a piece of scrap wood beneath your workpiece in order to protect the surface that's under your workpiece. With the holes drilled in the apron, I'm going to mark the edge most holes in the tabletop. Then I'm going to insert the screws so that they just protrude from the apron. Then we line them up to the holes in the tabletop and screw them in. When drilling the tabletop, be sure not to drill all the way through. One tip would be to mark your hole depth on your drill bit with a piece of masking tape. Now we try and line up the screws and the holes in the tabletop as best we can. Once they're more or less lined up, you can screw the screws into the tabletop. Now we can add the rest of the screws. So this is the apron attached to the tabletop. We can now do the same on the other side. On the long aprons, I've arbitrarily chosen to use 11 screws per side. This means we have to divide the 6 foot length into 12 even parts, which is every 6 inches. With a long apron marked, I've decided to add 2 additional screws, 1 inch from the edge on both sides of the apron. I put the apron in place take a piece of scrap wood and run it along the edges of the tabletop to ensure that the apron is in position. Now I drill my pilot hole while the apron is in place. Next I insert a screw. And we'll do the same on this side. I'm going to add the remaining screws and then repeat on the other side. It's time to attach the legs. You can already tell that that leg is very tall. I think 4 feet is too much. I've decided to take off another 8 inches giving the table feet a total length of 40 inches. The table legs come in the corner, the long side of the leg runs along the long apron. The screws will be spaced 3 quarters of an inch from each side and 3 quarters of an inch from the bottom. I'm going to put the factory cut side on the tabletop because it's the most square. With the legs two screws in place it's apparent that this is not enough can wiggle this thing quite a bit. So we'll add a screw that goes through the apron and into the leg from the outside, three quarters of an inch from the edge. 
I was afraid that this screw and this screw might cross each other within the wood, but fortunately that didn't happen and this leg is much sturdier. If I try to wobble it, the whole table moves. The table is mostly done. There's just some issues that we have to address. The first being that it's a bit wobbly. The second being that this board in the middle can deflect. And then the third is that most of the corners have some misalignment that needs to be worked away. I'm going to attempt to smooth out the corners using my random orbital sander with the coarsest disc I have, which is an 80 grit. Be sure to use a dust mask and some goggles. Let's try to smooth out this corner. I'll remove this screw before coming around with the sander. Apart from the gap that needs to be filled, this edge is now smooth. I'm pretty happy with the result. And that's all for this week. Next week I'll make the structural improvements and probably start applying a finish. If you liked this video, please subscribe, leave a comment or leave a like.